After Effects' Warp Stabilizer and 3D Camera Tracker are based on a similar concept. Analyze points moving in a scene, try to use those points to reverse engineer where the camera originally was in the scene, and either stabilize or smooth out the camera's movements, or give you a 3D camera in After Effects so you can add new objects to the scene. Well, Warp Stabilizer has been upgraded to Warp Stabilizer VFX, or Visual Effects. It has more capabilities, including some features that originally came with 3D Camera Tracker, and some other tricks I'd also like to show you. But first, let's show you what it borrowed from 3D Camera Tracker. I have, in this particular composition, a piece of footage that includes a handheld shot of a person using a laptop computer. And it has a little bit of wobble and wander to it. If I used the warp stabilizer to go ahead and lock off the motion in this shot and otherwise use it at its defaults, some strange things kind of happen to the result. You'll notice that this whole footage is really warped in a very strange way. Well, the reason this is going on is because this scene has a mixture of objects that are indeed solid and should not be warping and objects that are indeed moving and changing shape. But for warp stabilizer to do its magic, it assumes that the objects are somewhat stable in their shape. The problem is, is that it's tracking this user's arm as if it was a wall. And when that wall is bending around and changing perspective, well, it thinks that the camera is doing that, not that the person's doing that. So what we need to do is tell Warp Stabilizer not to track the person, just track the stable objects like the laptop and the wall. Well, you can pre-process your footage by doing things like masking out the offending objects in your scene, or you can take advantage of some new features in Warp Stabilizer VFX. One thing that it grew from the 3D Camera Tracker is it can now show you the underlying track points that it used to go ahead and decide where the camera was in this shot. To do so, it temporarily reverts back to the original unstabilized shot to show you what's happening through time. Once you see all those points, you can see how they're just dancing around the guy's shirt collar and all these other problems with the hands, etc. You can go ahead and delete offending points. This logo burn-in is also a problem because it's not moving with the camera. It should not be misinterpreted as a straight wall. Anyway, now that I can see where my offending track points are, I can delete them and tell Warp Stabilizer not to take them into account when it tries to stabilize his shot. So what I can do is drag around and lasso some of these points. I'll grab the ones on the body first here and the logo. And then I'll grab the ones around the hand and start deleting those as well. I'll grab this hand as well. There we go. And that one needs to go as well. In addition to the ability to delete points, both Warp Stabilizer and 3D Camera Tracker had this new feature called Auto Delete Points Across Time. Both the 3D Camera Tracker and Warp Stabilizer will pick up a point, carry it for as many frames as it is confident that that is still the same point, and then perhaps drop that point because something obscured it, like a person walking in front of the scene, pick it up later, or go develop new points. Well, if Warp Stabilizer and 3D Camera Tracker now know that you've deleted a point that it was using for multiple frames, it will delete that point across all of those frames. A little bit of a labor saving when trying to clean up points, particularly in 3D Camera Tracker. However, as I mentioned, Warp Stabilizer is constantly regenerating new track points. So I'm gonna go somewhere here in time where there's new points to get rid of, and I'm gonna delete those as well. I don't need to be precise. I don't need to get every single little point that's wrong. What I want to do is just weigh things in favor of Warp Stabilizer having enough good points that it will generate a better track and therefore a better stabilization. We'll go a little bit later in time to a few more points I've created right around there. Maybe get rid of those guys. These guys around his shirt and his chin, which have been particularly annoying. More of these clustered around the fingers and hands. Get these as well. And keep moving through time to where I need to remove more groups of points. And again, I don't need to be completely thorough. I think I can go ahead and grab this many in through here. Just grab enough to tilt the balance. 
because it still has all these good points over here to track. Get rid of some of these on the shirt as well. A little bit later in time, get rid of some more points. Gone. Make sure I get that one. Gone. Offending hand and sleeve. Gone. And go to the end and get a few more around the hands. And this should be enough to tell Warp Stabilizer who's the good points and who's the bad ones. Couple here. And that should be the majority of our bad points. We've got a few jigglies in there here to get rid of. But that's a big improvement on balance. That's the last that I'll do. I'm going to turn off show track points. So I go back to seeing my stabilized shot. Ram preview. And now you'll see, for example, that this computer screen is keeping a nice steady shape. It's not being warped crazily as if the whole thing was made out of rubber. And you can also see the rest of the scene staying pretty stable as well. So that's the case where being able to see the track points with warp stabilizer is a real large advantage in being able to clean up and improve the quality of your stabilization. Whether you're going for no motion, which is the most drastic case of all, or just trying to smooth out the camera's motion.